I'm Miss Sarah, and this is At Home Makerspace, where every week I show you how to make fun projects with things you can find at home. Our project this week is one that you can enjoy experimenting with inside or outside. I'll be showing you how to make and test paper helicopters. So let's get started. To make your paper helicopter, you'll need some paper like printer paper or an index card, a ruler, a pencil, a pair of scissors, and a paper clip. I've decided to use an index card. Now I want my piece of paper to be long and thin, so I'm going to go ahead and fold my index card in half and cut it. My final paper will be one and a half inches wide and five inches tall but you can make yours whatever size you like as long as it's a long, thin piece of paper. I would recommend making it three or four times longer than it is wide. Next, I'm going to fold my piece of paper almost in half. Instead of folding my top all the way to the bottom, I'm going to fold it so there's about a quarter inch left over. Now unfold and grab your ruler. I'm going to be making a mark on that fold line in the middle. So since my paper is one and a half inches across, I am marking it at three quarters of an inch. I did the same to the top, and now I'm going to draw a line connecting them. What this will do is create a template for the wings. Now go ahead and cut along the line you just drew, but make sure to stop at that fold line. Now we're going to work on the bottom of our helicopter. I'm positioning my ruler about a quarter of an inch from the fold line. Make a mark that is at one-third of the width and two-thirds of the width. Since mine is one and a half inches, I'm making marks at one-half inch and one inch. You can see I made small marks right there. Now cut to the side until you reach the first mark. Flip it over and cut the other side until you reach the other mark. Make sure you don't cut all the way through. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold each of these tabs into the middle like so. This will make the handle of our helicopter. Now fold the bottom up a little bit and go ahead and grab your paper clip. We're going to add the paper clip to the end to give it a bit more weight and stability. Now fold your wings one one way and one the other way and your project is complete. And here is my completed helicopter. I'm going to head outside to test it out, but before I do, I wanted to give you a few helpful hints. So first, when you're ready to test, make sure that the wings are at an upward angle like this, so it looks like a capital letter Y. If they are flat like a capital T, it won't work as well. So make sure to lift them up into a capital Y. When you're getting ready to test it, you also want to make sure that the paper clip end is facing down and you'll want to try to drop it from as high as possible. So make sure you reach up really, really high or ask a tall member of your household, maybe a parent or an older sibling to help you test it out. Depending on the way your house is structured, you might also try dropping it from a staircase or a balcony. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that this works best on a relatively windless day. If it's too windy, unexpected things can happen. So these work best testing on a not too windy day. All right, let's head outside and test it out. Now that we know our helicopter works, let's see what it looks like in slow motion. Pretty cool video, right? I filmed it using the slow-mo feature on my iPhone. 
If you or someone in your household has a camera that can film in slow motion, filming the helicopters as they fall is a really cool thing to try. Now that you know how to make a paper helicopter, you can have fun experimenting with them. One experiment that you could try is making helicopters out of different kinds of paper to see which one works best. Now I made my original helicopter out of an index card and I wanted to see what would happen if I made one out of a lighter weight paper, a sheet of printer paper, and a heavier paper, a thick cardboard from a shipping box. First, let's start by testing out the lighter weight printer paper. Now I made this helicopter the exact same way I did the first one. The only difference is that I started by cutting my printer paper to the same size as my half index card. Everything after that, the cutting and the folding, was exactly the same. So let's go ahead and test this one out and we'll also see it in slow motion. And now let's try the helicopter made from the heavier cardboard. Now with this one, I also started off by cutting the cardboard to the same size as my half index card. From there, I cut and folded the same, except instead of cutting and folding this bottom part, I cut the flaps completely off. So as you can see, it's just one piece there at the bottom. Now let's test this one out in both regular speed and slow motion. Here we have all three of our helicopters. The one made with printer paper, the one made from an index card, and the one made out of heavy cardboard. If I were to drop all three of these from the same height at the same time, which one do you think would hit the ground first? And which one do you think would hit the ground last? Why do you think that? Take a moment to leave your guess down below in the comments, then stay tuned and we'll see what happens. Now clearly our cardboard one hit the ground first, but which one hit the ground last? Was it paper or was it our index card? Let's see it in slow motion to find out. So it turns out that the paper helicopter hit the ground last. Did you guys guess right? When you're trying this one out at home, feel free to substitute in some different materials. What would happen, for example, if you substituted in tissue paper or lightweight cardboard like a cereal box? If you try it out, I'm really curious to know what happens, so feel free to leave your findings in the comments down below. Another experiment you can try is playing around with the size of your helicopter. So let's say you make a helicopter that's half the size of your original or twice the size of your original. What do you think will happen? Let's start by making a helicopter that's twice as big as our original. Now since paper worked best in our last experiment, I decided to use paper to make this one. I started by cutting a piece of paper that was twice as big as my original. Now, my original was one and a half inches wide, so I doubled that to three inches. It was also five inches tall, so I doubled it to 10 inches. The rest I made exactly the same, cutting and folding just like before. So let's go ahead and take our jumbo helicopter outside and test it out.
Now let's make our tiny helicopter. I made this one one half the size of my original, and I also made it out of paper. Now my original was one and a half inches wide, so my small one was three quarters of an inch. My original was also five inches tall, so my small one was two and a half inches tall. Everything else I did the same, cutting and folding. Now let's go ahead and try out our tiny helicopter. Here we have all three of our helicopters, our large one, our medium one, and our small one. Now as before, what do you think would happen if I dropped all three of these helicopters from the same height at the same time? Which one would hit the ground first and which one would hit the ground last? Why do you think that? Take a moment to write your guess down below in the comments and then we'll come back and see what happens. Now, as you could see, our small helicopter hit the ground first, but which helicopter hit the ground last? Was it our large or our medium? Let's watch it in slow motion to find out. So it turns out that our large helicopter was the last to hit the ground. If you guys try this experiment at home, see how large you can make your helicopters and how slowly it can fall. Now that you've seen how my experiments turned out, it's time to do some experimenting of your own. You can play around with size or materials like I did, or try something new. What do you think would happen if you made the blades of your helicopter longer or shorter? What would happen if you took off the paper clip or added even more weight to the bottom? If you try any of these experiments, please let me know the results down in the comments. We'd also love it if you could take a picture or video of your project to share with us at the library. You can do so through our Facebook at www.facebook.com slash FHCPL, through our Instagram, our handle is at FHCPL, or you can send us an email. Our email address is makerspace at finleylibrary.org. Don't forget to include anything you learned while trying out your experiments. We hope you've enjoyed making paper helicopters this week. Come back next week for part two of our paper helicopter series where we'll be testing out a few different designs to see if any of them are better than the ones we made this week. See you then. Bye! And now I have a special blooper for you. Here's what happens when you use your helicopter on a day that's a little too windy. Enjoy!